Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about a particular kind of filter that uh, sees use in all kinds of different circuits. That, uh, that filter is what's called a twin T filter. And what do I mean by a twin T filter? Well, I've got a picture here of a twin T circuit. And the reason why it's called a twin T is because we have two capacitors and a resistor that make up one T and two resistors and a capacitor that make up the second T and they're in parallel. And what this circuit does that is unique is that this is a notch circuit. Okay, so the frequency response of this circuit looks like a nice sharp notch like that because what it's doing is it is creating two different filters in parallel. So there is a resistor through a capacitor to ground here, which forms a low pass filter. And there is a capacitor to a resistor to ground, which forms a high pass filter. And when we sum a high pass filter and a low pass filter, then we get their combined response, but you notice that there is a relationship between each of these components. This resistor is half the value of these two resistors, which are equal in value, and this capacitor is twice the capacitance of these two capacitors, which is equal, and what that does is it creates a, we, we end up creating a low pass filter and a high pass filter that overlap each other, such that we have the low pass does this kind of a thing and the high pass does a, this kind of a thing. And so what we end up getting is we end up getting a notch in the response, in the overall response. And so this twin T filter gets used in all kinds of things. Um, you can use it as a very highly selective notch filter to notch out a frequency that you don't want. Um, you can, uh, it, it actually gets used for um, shaping um, a, an input pulse for like analog drum machines. If you look at my percussor circuit, um, you'll see that the shaping of the pulse to create the, the, the basic um, analog kick drum sound is done with a twin T filter. But another really clever application of a twin T filter is in the color sound inductorless wah pedal. Okay, so this is the schematic for the color sound wah. But before we get into it too much, I wanted to just kind of briefly go over what makes the wah wah pedal sound the way that it does. And what it's doing is it's creating a very sharp peaking filter that is really emphasizing one narrow band of frequencies and as you as you push the foot pedal down and up it's sweeping the frequency up and down in frequency which gives it its characteristic sound it's the fact that you have a super narrow band um, peak filter that is sweeping across frequency okay so as we consider our twin t filter and what the wah does let's take a look at the color sound wah. Now most wah pedals are going to use an inductor with some resistors and capacitors to create that really narrow resonance for the filter. But what the color sound wah does is it actually uses a twin T filter to do that. So let's take a look at our circuit here. You can see that it's all built around just a single transistor, which means that it's a single transistor gain stage for the entire circuit and um, we'll just start at the input and work our way through. So we've got a pull down resistor and a DC blocking cap on the input. We have our base resistor for the base of our transistor. Our power, our, our positive voltage is going through a 10K ohm resistor to the collector of our transistor and we've tied the emitter directly to ground. And so what this is gonna do is that's going to cause there to be uh, amplification in this stage. Okay. And then our base 
of our transistor gets biased through R3 here, okay? And um, the value of this resistor is basically used in conjunction with the, uh, with the current that's going to go into the base of this transistor to bias this voltage up, right? Because, or to create the bias voltage here. Because the voltage drop across this resistor is going to be the voltage divided by the resistance, okay? So this resistor here serves to actually bias the base of the transistor. So that's how we get our signal into the transistor. But then what ends up happening is actually something really clever. And if you recall, when we take the signal off of the collector of a transistor, the signal is inverted relative to the input. Okay, so if our input signal swings like this, the output signal of the transistor is going to swing opposite. Okay, so what we end up doing is we take our signal off the collector of our transistor and we actually run it through this DC blocking cap to get rid of our bias voltage and it's now going to run through a twin T circuit right here, a twin T filter. Okay, so our output is going to get a super sharp notch put in it, but this super sharp notch is being provided as negative feedback to the input. So when we take our signal and we provide negative feedback and a super sharp notch, it's going to end up, so if right here we have a super sharp notch from our uh, from our twin T circuit, then when it comes back over here, because, because this point is out of phase, we are now creating a super sharp notch in the positive direction, which is exactly what our wah pedal, which is what the wah pedal does. That's how it makes it sound. So how do we actually make it so that it sounds like a wah? Well, the trick is that you remember that in the twin T filter, we had this capacitor being double the value of each of these capacitors, which is not strictly the case. It's roughly, it's roughly double this one, but not this one. And that these resistors were twice as large as this resistor. Well, what, what they did in this circuit is a Couple of things. One, they made the values not equal, but they also put a resistor on the between this capacitor and ground. So one thing that's going to do is that's going to um, lower the Q of the filter, or it's going to widen the response of that notch a little bit. But it also allows us to put a resistor here, a fixed resistor, and a variable resistor here, our potentiometer that's connected to our foot pedal, and that's going to allow us to actually sweep the frequency of our filter. And so as the resistance of this potentiometer changes, the location of the peak of our twin T filter moves up and down. And so we provide our input signal. It's now inverted once we get here. We take that inverted signal and we notch it and we provide that notched inverted signal back to the input, which results in a negative feedback so that our output over here, by the time we take our, our output signal over here, we've got this nice peak response of the signal, which is exactly what we want our WAS, our WA pedal to do, our circuit to do, okay? And so once we have done that, and we now have our nice peaky filter going on here. We have a DC blocking cap. And then we go through a parallel resistor and capacitor, which results in some filtering. In fact, this C8 works in conjunction with R10 to create a high pass filter. And this R9 works in conjunction with R10 to be a voltage divider because over here we've gained it up, we've gained our signal up, 
And so now over here, we are reducing it. So we have 47K here, we have 100K here, which means that we are going to be uh, reducing the overall signal level to about a third of what it is over on this side of it, okay? And um, so after we block the DC and we filter our signal and reduce its level a little bit, then we also have a volume control just before the output so that we can um, so that we can govern just how loud the signal is going to be when the circuit is activated. But on the whole, it's a really basic circuit, but a really clever implementation of the twin T filter. Um, a way that this circuit could be adapted is instead of the transistor, this could actually be um, an op amp stage if we wanted to, where we actually put this twin T filter in the negative feedback loop um, of the op amp but really it works quite well with this transistor makes it a very you know kind of compact and easy circuit to work with and so um it it's a design that has found a home in for example zvex pedals um, they use a modification of this in the sequa the sequenced wah where basically all that's happening is that they're going through and instead of having a potentiometer here they have a bank of several different resistors and they have some logic that just every however many milliseconds for your sequence it goes to this one and then 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 to this one and um, these are actually all the little potentiometers that are on the top of the pedal and it just steps through or sequences them going this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And it, they have some switching logic where, you know, you can determine the number of steps that it goes through and whatever. But really all that's happening is that it's this basic circuit, but they're just messing with the resistance that is connected here to create, instead of a smooth continuous walk controlled by your foot, it's a sequenced wah that is controlled by just switching what the value of that resistance is at fixed intervals in time. So there we go. Pretty quick, pretty easy, but really a fun implementation of a very basic building block that is the twin T filter. Um, you can actually get much more uh, sophisticated with your twin T implementation for even more shaping of a signal. For example, if you go look at Dead Astronauts Astro Cab Sim, um, it's, it does basically the entire um, filter shaping for a cab simulator using a very large complex twin T implementation in an op amp loop. And it sounds fantastic. So if you haven't looked at it, I encourage you to go look at it. But there we go. Twin T filters are a really fun, basic um, notch filter. But if you put a notch in a negative feedback loop, you then are actually accentuating instead of cutting out that frequency region. Works great for a while. I hope that that was helpful to you. And until then, we will see you next time.